Primarily we focused on lettings for a long time, but now we are a completely integrated sales and lettings business. Uh, been established for over 60 years, we manage 3,500 properties in central London and we sell you know, about a thousand units a year globally from our UK and overseas office. In terms of where we sell all of our branches, we have 19 branches, they're all in, in London itself. So we sell primarily in London, but our overseas offices, so we have eight overseas offices, those are focused on selling UK property. So while we focus on London, because that's where our lettings business is, we sell in Reading, Birmingham, Manchester as well, but that's new off-plan sales. As a combined business employed about 250 people, um, about 150 of those work in estate agency side, lettings and sales and management. Um, and then we have a large back office team that work for us that look after our processing and uh, deal confirmations and deal progressions and, and all of that. But yeah, in total we have about 250 people working for us. So our Christmas party is pretty pretty difficult to <laughs> coordinate now. I think the biggest challenge for us is stock levels. Um, there's a, talking lettings first, we have a huge undersupply of available stock. Every single one of our branches running on incredibly low levels. We have huge demand from Zoopla, you know, as one bringing us thousands of leads on a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis, and we just don't have enough stock to fill them. We could probably, on average, let another 500 units a month at the moment. Um, we just don't have the stock. Um, so that's the one big challenge for lettings. Second challenge for sales is, again, stock for stuff that people want to sell. The problem is people like the idea of selling, but they sit on the fence. Can they find something else? Are they gonna be able to find something else with mortgage, with, with interest rates rising? So actually stock is a big challenge for us as a, as a, as a business. Um, in terms of the wider context, we're growth, we're growth minded. So we, we always look for additional, additional places we can grow within our footprint and looking for an additional offices. Actually, that's been quite challenging this year. We have two planned for next year, um, which are agreed, but that, that growth is, is kind of held back by where there's gonna be supply. So it's, supply is the biggest issue that we run at the moment. Our business is different from most other agents in that we are unique with our overseas presence. So we have offices in places like Hong Kong, Singapore, KL, Dubai, Shanghai, uh, South Africa, and those overseas branches are focused on investors in those places buying in London. So why is that different? It means that our teams out there are not selling local property. They're experts in London primarily, but also Reading, Birmingham, Manchester if they want to be there. But finding them homes in London or places that we rent out, and then as a business in the UK, our business is then letting and managing it. So in terms of growth opportunities, Having good developments that are coming up in regeneration areas or well-priced developments that fit what people in Hong, you know, overseas investors look for, that enables us to grow. It's not something we specifically need to go out and get to, to grow the business. We already have established offices. Our Hong Kong office has seven people working there. So we have, we have good teams. It's just having the right, the right stock that people want to buy. So in terms of growth, that's one area and it differs from other people. So 70% of our UK rental stock comes from our overseas offices. So again, I'm not on the high street knocking on doors like all of our competitors are. Our business is more, you know, it's, it starts its journey outside of the UK and then it's <clears throat> looked after by our UK business. But in terms of growth in London, we're looking for more offices. So we, as I said, we've got two opening next year. We're always on the, on the look for a next office in order that we can grow within that area. But it has to work within our investor base because if we don't have those clients overseas interest in that area, we don't have the stock and then there's no stock to let. So it's really important that you know, we, we focus on areas where we're going to you know, have that growth opportunity that will work for us for a business to be able to service it. Cost of living crisis and mortgage rate increases, none of that's affected our business at all. We are super short of supply. 
So we have, at the moment, an average of 120 tenants for every available property. We have no supplies. We have bidding for certain properties for rental. We have not enough stock coming on for rent. On the, on the demand side, you've got the massive drop in the pound that, that happened very recently, in fact, when I was abroad, and that has just brought investors from overseas who were sitting on the sidelines waiting for things to happen. That's just brought them to the front now. If you're, in, if you're a dollar-based investor and you've got 20% more for your money, plus you've had a bit of a pull down in the prime London market in prices, I'm not saying big drop, but a slight pullback in prices, or you can negotiate that big, bit harder, because it's a buyer's market at the moment, that's encouraged a lot of people to come in, and I, and I, I think so. Has it affected us? No, it hasn't. We're just seeing, we're seeing growth. I mean, we were, we were just in oh, three of our overseas offices, Dubai, Singapore, KL, I met 150 investors over a, over a 12 day trip, and all of them are active, all of them are looking to buy, and you know, I'm quite positive and optimistic about the market. I think if there's overseas people still interested in investing in the UK, and London primarily, that's a good thing to worry about. Have we, you know, in terms of negatives that have happened is obviously people are worried as landlords. Our government put landlords under attack because they want to tax them. You know, we're not a very friendly country to investors now. Um, and so buy to let investors have been under pressure. We have seen some exit, but when I say some, I'm saying quite a few. But I worry whether you may have more people exiting, especially UK. Um, investors. Um, I think that's a challenge but we're, we're at the moment we have we look at not so much revenue we look at our client base we, we have we're up 11% more landlords we're letting for this year compared with a year ago and we have a year-on-year -year growth and that's I think that's not just because our local branches but because our overseas offices are dealing with investors who are kind of left on their own when they've bought our local teams look after them and that's where we pick them up. So I see, you know, we haven't seen any, you know, reduction since the cost of living crisis has come in so far. We have tenants with lots of money and you'd think with cost of living they wouldn't be able to afford to rent, so it's good. With changes in the agenda coming, we've got obviously a government change come again and I don't know that the tenant reform, no one knows if the tenant reform act is going to be on the agenda or not on the agenda, but bearing in mind if it is on the agenda, Actually, I don't see that as a big effect to landlords. If you're a long-term landlord and you now have to be fair with your tenants and not just kick them out because you don't like them, you know, you can still evict your tenant if you want to sell or you're going to need to totally refurbish or you're going to live in it. So you're not constricted. It's just giving tenants more certainty. And that's a good thing. If you're an investor, you want long-term income. So it's good to have a tenant who's going to stay there 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so actually, I don't see it as a negativity, but a negative thing. But I'm not sure whether they're going to. That's going to be high on the agenda to come or not. I've been in a state agency now for about 27 years. I've worked for Ben and Reeves just over 25 of them. I'm a director of the business now, um, and I just fell into it. Actually, I was. I worked for a bank before, and a friend of mine. I could. I couldn't hack it. I hated it, and so when I was looking for someone else, a friend of mine had an estate agency and said why don't you come and do this and actually I really loved it and I, and I, and I still love it and I'm still passionate about it and I still, um, I still work in it every day so I don't just sit dealing with staff and doing interviews like this, I deal with investors, um, I just sold a building for £25 million, pounds. I, I still love meeting with clients, I think I'm probably one of the only directors in the business that on their business card has their mobile number because clients call me every day. Before this, I spoke to someone in Singapore I met last week asking me about buying and the process. You know, I'm always, I, I love that. In fact, that's what I love about the job. If I was just dealing with paper and, and people, I probably wouldn't still want to do it. But I love, you know, I like property. I like the London property market. I like showing stuff. I like taking clients out. I don't do it that much but as I said I, I will do it and I enjoy doing it and I you know and I think one of the things that a lot of people in our business don't like doing they don't like really speaking to customers you know how many times does do our team use email for everything because they actually don't want to pick the phone up and one of the things that we push is picking the phone up to speak to customers speak to clients speak to landlords speak to tenants even if it's an uncomfortable call it's much easier to do it on the phone than it is on a cold email
So I think that's really important. And so that's the way I am as a person. You know, in the morning when I drive in from home in the morning, the, first, the hour that I drive in, even though it's five miles down the road, um, I'm usually speaking to people overseas, and that's the same at night, right? So when I go back, I'm speaking to people who may be local in order to have that conversation that you may or may not have had time for in the day. And I think it's really, you know, that's, that's what I love. I love, you know, I love chasing business. I love new clients. I love old clients. But, you know, and things do go wrong, you know, let's be honest. Things go wrong every day, which, which really upsets people and people don't like to do it. You know, we have difficult clients, we have difficult tenants and buyers, and we have properties that go wrong all the time. But actually, it's how you come out of that and deal with it that I think adds a lot of fun to the job. And I, you know, I enjoy it. I've done it a long time and I hopefully keep doing it for a bit longer. <laughs>